Miss Grant 2023 has concluded and as usual the introduction for Miss Grant this year very much understood the assignments. I just love how extra Miss Grant is sometimes. We just need that in our life sometimes. As for the outfits, I do love this complimentary color trend that we are seeing going on. We saw that at the preliminary competition as well with some of the most amazing dresses that were on display. And this year at Miss Grand for the introduction outfits, these beautiful sort of yellow color blocked ensembles that just really very much fit the vibe. The intro was, was, like I said, very grand. It started off very sort of serious, you know, grabbing your attention that way and sort of slowly evolved into something a little bit more fun. As usual with Miss Grand, I have no complaints about the in, the production itself. Miss Grand's productions are always done very, very well um, in terms of stage, lighting, music especially. I thought the music was at points very, very, very good, but we'll get into that a bit later. One complaint that I do have about the introduction is the amount of time that it took up. I mean, oh my goodness, I think I timed it. We sat through introductions for a whole 45 minutes at least and that is just absolutely insane. By the time that Cambodia came up, I was already tired of intros. They had the girls walking so far. I think, I think Kendall Jenner would have charged millions to walk the distance that these poor women had to walk to the microphone just to introduce themselves. So I think that took up a lot of unnecessary time. Um, it made me feel very fatigued and not to mention for the whole 45 minutes, they used the exact same song, which was banging in my head by the time we came to Vietnam. So that's just one thing that I had to complain about. But I must say Ireland did something special with her intro. As per usual at Miss Grand, the girls are allowed to get very, very creative with everything that they do. And Ireland did perform a little sort of Irish dance, which I must give her her dues for because honestly my ankle would have checked out on the first hop so that was very very impressive last thing about the introductions are we going to talk about the outgoing miss grand's singing as is also usual for miss grand there are some special awards to be handed out so the award for national costume ended up going to japan nigeria and vietnam so they all won national costume and then miss grand also has the power of the year thing that they have you know country's power of the year which is basically a popular vote and the winner of the popular vote was Myanmar, which gave her automatic entry not only into the top 20, but also into the top 10 later on. So the top 20 actually ended up being Myanmar, who was the popular vote, the USA, who is honestly a strong fave of mine, has always been, and I just think that she was fabulous. Puerto Rico and um, what's interesting about Puerto Rico is that she actually beat the USA earlier this year when they both com competed for um, Puerto Rico's title but then the USA w went on to go to the USA and win USA's grand title. Then we have Nigeria, um, Czech Republic also made the top 20, Indonesia, Honduras, Laos, Dominican Republic, Colombia, India, Ukraine, Thailand, Peru, Angola, the Netherlands, Uzbekistan, France, Spain, and Vietnam. Overall, I think I ended up getting like 13 out of 20 of the top 20 correct, but the shocking non-placements for me definitely was Venezuela and the Philippines. And yes, the Philippines was a huge shocking non-placement, but um, there were also some stories that the Philippines' mother um, was telling people that she would rather go to Miss Universe anyway, but that's just a rumor, that's just a story. Um, pleasant surprises in the top 20 for me obviously had to include 
Angola and Nigeria. I was very pleased to see that there are two African countries in the top 20 and I thought that they were both equally deserving. For the swimsuit competition, the girls were wearing these bright pink bikinis which I thought were just so fun. Equally fun was the music chosen for the swimsuit competition. It definitely felt like I was in a nightclub in the late 2000s. It really was giving. There were some stairs added to the stage just for some extra effect but honestly the stairs were looking a bit cheap because they were like just these basic stage stairs no decoration, nothing. So I would have liked for the stairs to be a bit more grand, honestly, because they did become a major feature of the competition this year. As for the swimsuit performances themselves, I have a few notes on a couple of girls. France, honestly, I don't know how she made the top 20 because her swimsuit performance, she was honestly walking like some sort of a hostage. Um, Myanmar's knees, were bended so that did disappoint me a little bit when it comes to nigeria of course she was fabulous in my opinion i think nigeria really did deliver the face the walk everything the attitude i think nigeria was one of the best in swimsuits to be honest with you and lastly the usa the usa this woman just she really understands the assignment of a grand performance and i love it so there was an award for Best in Swimsuit, which was won by the Dominican Republic. The top 10, once again, Myanmar, who was the popular vote winner. The Netherlands, the Netherlands to me stood out a lot of prelims. Um, so I really like the Netherlands a lot. Then we had Angola, who, was, who I was very happy about. Colombia, Thailand, the USA, obviously, I love her and vietnam and then they did this really shitty thing where they put like an ad break in the middle of announcing the top 10 which i think is just so strange lastly indonesia the dominican republic and peru also made the top 10. so as you can see nigeria who i thought was one of the best in the swimsuit competition ended up falling out as well as puerto rico puerto rico was an interesting one for me because as i've said before she had beaten the usa at puerto rico's competition earlier this year and then obviously usa con usa's contestant this year representative went on to compete at miss grand usa which she won um, so i think that that's super interesting that puerto rico managed to fall out before the usa so as per usual the next host country for miss grand was revealed at this year's miss grand competition so miss grand international 2024 will be held in myanmar next year on the 25th of october i just think it's just you know watching miss grand you do have to get used to it being so completely audacious and extra and um i don't know why it was necessary why it's always necessary to play the next host country's whole national anthem it's just too much i mean i've been watching the rugby recently so i've been getting used to hearing national ans anthems all over the show but just to hear it in pageantry is just so jarring to me and next up um, they had another award which is the golden grand award which i think is just the weirdest award ever um, <laughs> and it's for the national director of countries so uh, you know best national director or not best but you know someone who has shown you know a lot of love a lot of effort uh, for the Miss Grand International organization as a whole and this year the winner of this was actually a familiar face Mr. Ivan Gunawan who is the national director for Indonesia and oh my gosh guys this whole thing was just so extra so they actually sashed him crowned him he did a walk which you gotta love him for it i just think that this guy he just has the most personality i think you know love him or hate him a lot of people have very mixed opinions on audacious people like this sometimes but i don't know i like people who are just so unapologetically extra the way that ivan is so a lot of people sort of were like oh, this is such a clown show but for me you know what life life is way too serious we shouldn't take ourselves and life so seriously so i think for me the place i am in my life right now 
Miss Grant couldn't have come at a better time, to be honest with you. But after all of this silliness, they actually got into something very, very serious where um, this year's Miss Grant competition is very much focused on the recent conflict. Well, I shouldn't say recent because it has literally been going on forever, but the recent developments happening um, with the Israel Hamas conflict. And yes, the rest of the pageant was very much um, sort of constructed around this conflict uh, because, of course, Miss Grand International is against war and violence. That is their whole MO. So, as was also the case last year, um, the top 10 had to do anti war statements, and I think that a lot of them were encouraged to base their statements around the uh, current conflict in Israel. Angola, I thought, did pretty good. Colombia, to me, was also impactful. The Dominican Republic, uh, she advocated for, you know, just talking things out. The Indonesia, Indonesia was, I'm not sure of the statement that she made because she talked about the war between Israel and Palestine. I don't think that's correct because technically Hamas isn't Palestine. Um, Myanmar said peace is a choice, which I think I resonated with that a lot. The Netherlands did very well. Um, she suggested something practical that we can all do in our lives, which of course is teaching our children, not teaching our children to be hateful and teaching our children to, you know, have sympathy and empathy for everyone. Peru, I thought was quite good as well. Thailand did okay. The USA, I got a lot of contrived emotion from the USA, which I didn't like. Um, very felt very insincere at, at times, very inauthentic, like her tone of voice, very inauthentic. Vietnam, bit difficult to follow, but she seemed very sincere. After this, on this emotional note, we did have the final walk of Isabella Menin, who was Miss Grand International 2022. I thought that she looked very pretty. Her gown was very suitable for a final walk gown, and she was very emotional. Um, one thing, right, with these pageants that don't necessarily have a network, a television network breathing down their necks, they just don't care about time. Isabella's speech was so long. It was so long and it went on for so, so long. And I think that really um, pageants that don't have time restrictions on them should really start looking at uh, imposing some upon themselves because oh my goodness it's just exhausting this the whole thing guys the whole Miss Grand International was four hours long four hours long and the ad breaks weren't even that long it's just all of the time wasting with the intro which was about an hour and Isabella's speech, it's just too exhausting. I cannot do that again. This is why I love Miss Universe because Miss Universe is so streamlined. It's just, you know, you know what to expect. And I like that. For the evening gown competition, Angola, I thought she, her gown had stunning detail, but it was just too short in my opinion. Colombia, she was wearing a lovely color. It looked like a whole sunset. The Dominican Republic was so pretty. I really love it. Indonesia was freaking stunning. I mean, what a dress. Myanmar had a very prettily detailed yellow dress on, I thought. For the, Nether for the Netherlands, where did they find this woman? Because to me, she was just perfection. I really liked the dress. Peru was very pretty. Thailand, I don't like the top part of the dress. I didn't like that much. For the USA, oh my goodness, how glorious was she? Such a queen, such a goddess. Um, I, did, I don't like the way that the USA spoke at her speech, but she just, everything else she does so perfectly. Lastly, Vietnam, she looked very beautiful and angelic in my opinion. So the top five ended up being Colombia. Honestly, I never need to see another cape again in my life after this edition of Miss Grand International, everyone and their mother was wearing a cape and flinging it around on their gowns. 
Um, also in the top five was Peru, the USA, which I was very happy about because I do like her a lot. Myanmar and lastly Vietnam. Uh, it's the host country, so sure, I'm not very surprised about about Vietnam making it. Then it was time for the final Q and A for the top five, and the final question basically came down to if you could speak to either the leader of Hamas or Israel, who would you speak to, and what would you say? And for me, what, what was interesting about this is that all the women could hear each other's answers, even though they were asked the exact same question. So I would argue that the last woman to answer had a major advantage over the first woman to answer. But we all know that basically, at Miss Grand, I don't think the final Q&A matters anyway. <laughs> but let's get into it anyway. Uh -huh. Colombia was actually first up and she said that she would talk about, uh, she would talk to Israel's leader and encourage him to recognize Palestine as its own country. And secondly, she would also talk to Hamas's leader and just basically ask what is wrong with him. <laughs> um, I'm simplifying it now, but to me, Colombia had a very good grasp over what is actually going on. Um, in Israel, even though it's a very complicated situation to me, she was she seemed the most informed. With Peru, she said she would talk to Israel's leader um, and encourage him to take better care of all of his people. Um, she overall, I didn't think it was the best answer, but it was passable, I suppose. The USA chose both and encouraged them to talk it out. Um, then she said she would especially talk to the leader of Palestine, which um, Palestine wasn't an option. Hamas isn't Palestine. So yes, USA to me didn't have a very firm grasp over what was going on. Myanmar chose equally Israel and Palestine again. Again, you cannot talk to the president of Palestine. <laughs> Lastly, Vietnam chose Hamas and um, basically said that we must think of the children. Like I said before, I do think that when it came to final Q and A, that Colombia did the best. She obviously had the best grasp of what was going on in Israel. She was the most informed and had the most uh, was able to display the most knowledge on the situation. So finally it was time for the crowning, but obviously first of all we had to crown Best in Gown, which was won by Russia. Russia, I don't know, I think it, it was based on prelims, but Russia to me in prelims wasn't nearly the best. I thought that what she did in prelims was a crime against humanity, adding that ugly cover-up to that beautiful dress, which was actually a bit too short anyway. but. Uh, nonetheless, she did look lovely at the finals. However, I thought her gown at the finals was absolutely gorgeous. Then it was time to um, crown or acknowledge the grand voice winner. Grand voice, guys. Imagine you enter a pageant and you are forced to compete in a mini, like, the voice type of thing. Singing is not for everyone, but this was won by Ghana nonetheless it, it must be one of the silliest things that the owner of Miss Grand International has ever come up with. The rest of the top 10 which didn't make it into the top 5 were all crowned the fifth runner-up which you know of course it's Miss Grand of course why what do you mean it doesn't make sense do you know what you're watching then there came the part that we actually care about, which was fourth runner-up, third runner-up, etc. The fourth runner-up was Vietnam, which I wasn't surprised about. Third runner-up was the USA, which I... After final q and I tended to sort of agree that perhaps she shouldn't win, just because she doesn't... She, she didn't display knowledge on the actual advocacy that Ms. Grant actually stands for, which is being, you know, against war. And I would have think I would have thought that, you know, the people competing at Ms. Grant International would study up on any conflict happening all around the world, especially if they know that such a huge portion of the competition is going to be based on the Israel conflict at the moment. Then there was another ad break because of course 
and after the break it was announced that the second runner-up is Colombia. I strongly, strongly disagree with Colombia being the second runner-up. I strongly disagree <laughs> because Colombia in my opinion should have won. She should have won purely based on top 5 Q&A which is what pageantry is supposed to be. This is why I, I enjoy Miss Grand for what it is but it just it irks me every single year that they have top 5 Q&A but it's never the woman who actually answers the question competently that wins. To me, Colombia was the only one who displayed at least some knowledge on the Israel conflict and was able to discern between Israel's governmental body versus Hamas versus Palestine as an idea and the people of Palestine not necessarily being part of Hamas and Hamas not necessarily being the official governing body. You know, it's a very complicated situation, but Colombia at least displayed more knowledge on the conflict than the other women speaking. And I think for that reason, because she did answer the question so competently, she would have won because, you know, if this was Miss Universe, Columbia would have won because she gave the best answer and that was obvious to everyone. And then lastly, the first runner-up was Myanmar and the winner obviously was Peru. Now, I must say, lastly, when it comes to the production of Miss Grant, they had this whole theming of I'm Alive, the song I'm Alive, throughout the whole competition, which I loved. And at the end of the day, they had this whole cin cinematic score for the winner with I'm Alive. I think it was absolutely beautiful. Whoever did the sound design, except for when it came to, you know, the 45 minutes of intro for Miss Grant this year, deserves an applause because I think that that nice detail that they added there to the end was gorgeous and um, yes so that was Miss Grand International 2023 oh, absolutely exhausting as usual but now at least we know who won I miss Jim for this um, yes let me know what you guys think thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and I will see you in the next one